Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll go for the GFS, the GM, the Eastern RF and the GFS ensembles finish up with the UK Met Office run as well. We've got northerly winds coming in over the next few days so the air mass is going to be turning colder, it's going to be feeling pretty chilly. Beyond that into the start of next week it is looking potentially westerly winds are going to be coming back. But, as we'll see with the long-range forecast in a minute, there are signs we could be seeing northern blocking towards the middle of the month, which are which is one of the ways we could be turning things colder, and potentially properly cold as we head towards the end of November. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow us as well, the link's in the description. Now currently the winds are veering to the north, um, but there's still bit and um, sort of northwesterly so you can see on the radar at the moment most winds are coming in from the northwest direction convection from the ocean and the irish sea um so we've had a lot of rain across the northwest of england wales southwest england western parts of ireland and northern ireland and generally for scotland as well being close to the center of the low now we've got a lot of these showers around and they're going to continue over the next day or so before they do start to peter out later in the week as we have a colder air mass move through, drier air with lower dew points means it becomes a little bit difficult, more, more, more difficult to be, uh, create these showers. And we see the ridge of high pressure start to topple, which is giving us its northerly wind, so the pressure will be rising, so showers will start to be cut out. You will have noticed today there was definitely a chill to the air. I definitely felt when I went outside, um, definitely um, a chill to the air today as that cold air mass is moving through. First real signs that winter is coming. It was really chilly out there, even though it's still only some 9, 10 degrees. With that cold and northerly air mass, it is feeling just a little bit colder. Um, well, it's feeling quite a bit colder than last week. Um, but on the actual thermometer, only a couple of degrees colder, but feeling really, really quite chilly. So if you do go out, make sure you wrap up warm um, as it is getting colder. Lights are drawing in, of course, um, so we could be seeing a few overnight frosts over the course of this week. So we do now run through the GFS, see how that does, uh, what, what that shows for the next sort of two weeks, the first two weeks of November. You can see at the moment, northerly winds moving in with a chilly air mass. If we do have a look at the entry of GHPA temperature, you can see the minus five lines trying to push to Scotland, gets through Scotland, especially northern England as well. And a colder air mass generally gets through the whole country. And you can see about minus two to minus four degrees at entry of GHPA cold on the average. So pretty chilly, and right now it's only around minus two um, or two degrees below average this time of year. If you do go back to the pressure charts, you can see the high pressure eventually does topple, still in a colder air mass, and that's where we could see frost maybe Friday or maybe Thursday into Friday um, before westerly winds move back in for next weekend into the start of next week. Beyond that, it does look mainly westerly, mild in off the Atlantic. However, as we head right towards the end of the run, in around sort of 10 to 14 days' time, very interestingly, the GFS builds up high pressure, Scandinavian high potentially, um, but a lot of ridging to our north of blocking. You can see the tropospheric polar vortex is split up into many different parts. You've got this one over Greenland, Siberia, and one over towards northern Canada. Um, and this could turn into very cold. And right towards the end of the run, you can see big northern blocking, a Scandinavian high, also a bit of a green line, this big trough we're seeing over towards the UK, it's bringing in a very, very cold air mass. So we could be seeing things very cold on this latest GFS, look at the entry of DHPA temporary deviation. It's a good couple of degrees below average. Um, and remember, because it's getting to lots sort of middle to late of no, in late November, that average is dropping. So even though it's the same temperature deviation as it is currently, or it's going to be this week, it is a good few degrees colder at 800 THPS, simply because the mean temperature is um, sort of decreasing quite quickly this time of year, uh, or, or except what, what we'd expect to see, really. So quite a potent northerly wind, and that would be producing snow, even to Scotland um, lower levels, and maybe even to northern England lower levels. And if we did see it consistently move through, and we did get that cold air mass, the dry air, with low dew points all the way down to England, we could even be seeing some snow to low-lying areas. You can't rule that out for the second half of November. Now, if we do move on from that and have a look at the GEM, see how that does compare all the way to day 10. You can see at the moment, northerly winds pushing in. Then the high pressure topples, and we go mainly westerly. And then right towards the end of the run, 
Although it's not going for exactly what the GFS is going, you can see this split in the trop tropospheric polar vortex. We've got low pressure out of the Atlantic, low pressure on Siberia, low pressure over the North Pole. We've got this sort of slice of high pressure over Greenland, Svalbard, um, and that ridging, if we have a look at the entropy of temperature, is forcing colder air into the mid-latitude, down into sort of parts of northeast Canada, down through Siberia, all the way down um, into parts of potentially southeastern Europe as well. Um, potentially some cold red sort of moving in um so very interesting seeing this sort of blocking pattern again it's not as big as a block as the gfs but again it is a block nonetheless and if we did run it on a couple of days we could see it evolve into a proper greenland high and that would potentially force the uk quite cold for the middle of november so we'll have to see really what happens now it is day 10 so it is unreliable but seeing this both from the gfs and gm at this signs of building up high pressure to our north um it's very interesting and would go along with what we've been sort of seeing within sort of hinting within the models over the last um few days and the last few weeks in general and what we've had been seeing in our winter lookouts as well if we do finally have a look at the east of the long range models you can see again northerly winds pushing in at the moment and then the high pressure topples we go mainly westerly however towards day 10 you can see once again a ridge of high pressure building up towards greenland and we are pulling in a chilly northerly wind not Briefly cold at this, at this stage, but when this low does clear, we would be pulling in direct northerly. Now, it isn't anywhere near as much blocking as the GFS, and slightly different position to the GM, but still, it's ridging amplification of the jet stream, pulling in northerly winds. Now, this wouldn't be a brutally cold spell, but it'd be a couple of days of a northerly snap, and coming into the middle of November, it's a couple of degrees colder than it would be, or is going to be now. Um, as every week we move on, the air is cooling down very, very rapidly before it peaks, sort of December, January, uh, February time. So, yeah, very interesting seeing there's all three models showing some form of blocking around day 10 and onwards. Now, it is unreliable time frame, but the fact all three of the main models are going for it means there is definitely something out there in the atmosphere that is potentially setting, up, setting us up for some blocking through November. If we have a look at the GFS ensemble, as you can see, over the next week or so, we got our cooling and average temperatures um, a good few degrees below average. And sort of by the end of this week, around Thursday, Friday time, when we could see the overnight frost potentially in a few areas, we're seeing temperatures get down to minus two, minus three degrees in 50 HPA. Beyond that, towards next weekend and the start of next working week, temperatures return to around 5 degrees at 50 HP, a good couple of degrees below, above average with the westerly winds. And then in the longer term, there's just a lot of uncertainty. We've got some going very mild, some going very cold. The GFS operational runs sort of spread out there, going very mild at one point and then going very cold at the end. So you can see there is a whole lot of uncertainty with it. Precipitation signals aren't massive either, so... It's not confirmed it's going to be massive low pressure or massive high pressure either. There's a lot of uncertainty within the ensembles, um, and it's pretty difficult to seeing this this time of year. As, of course, small, uh, I've said this over the last few videos, really, in the last few weeks in general, that small changes in the pressure patterns, small changes in air masses can give drastic changes this time of year because we have got some bitterly cold air just to our north, towards Iceland and Greenland. But we've also still got some very warm air towards North Africa, Spain, so very subtle changes in our wind direction and our pressure patterns can, can produce massive swings on the ensembles. And that's why we've got this massive spread. Whereas if we're in the depths of winter, it's whether we're going cold or just generally chilly um, and sort of around zero degrees, five degrees, 850 HPA. And in the summer, even we can pull in colder air, but generally that's just around 5 degrees, 850 HPA, nothing massively cold. It's because this time of year we've got massive disparities, um, and it's similar to what we see in spring as well, where we do have warm air to our south, but still bitterly cold air to our north. So it's just something we have to keep an eye on, really, um, and it's just sort of what we've got to do this time of year in terms of looking at the ensembles. If you have a look at Glasgow, you can see a lot of spread as well. Pretty chilly in the next few days, temperatures peaking at around minus 4, minus 5 degrees, 850 HPA later this week before returning to around or above average um, for around 8th, 9th of November and staying around average for a couple of days and dipping below average, but that's typical of colder and warmer sectors. And then in the longer term, uh, so much uncertainty. Some going down to minus 10, minus 12 at 850 HPA, others going up towards 10 or 12 degrees. So 20 to 25 degree temperature difference, which is truly uh, massive, really. Um, that's a massive swing, massive difference between seeing temperatures in fi around 15 degrees or being temperatures around minus 5 degrees with a lot of snowfall. So, yeah, um, just shows the uncertainty. More precipitation, so more of a signal of low pressure around, 
But again, that's not too unusual for Scotland. Um, and again, we'll have to really see how what, what resolves it. But at this stage, very interesting seeing with those operational ones going for blocking. So we do finally finish up having a look at the UK Met Office run. We'll go through precipitation, then we'll have a look at temperature as well. You can see mainly showers in the west at the moment, um, in the north, the north and the west at the moment. And those will continue throughout tomorrow afternoon as well. Potentially coming less lesser in sort of extent, um, not forming into lines that we've seen over the last day or two. And the wind's going to veer more northerly, so it's going to cut it out for many inland areas. But from north-facing uh, coasts, there will be more showers and potentially come inland maybe across Wednesday afternoon. But you can see dry air mass move through by Thursday, and as that high pressure topples, dry for many, still some cloud and rain in Scotland, and then before weather fronts do move in by the next weekend. If we have a look at the max temperatures, you can see at the moment, pretty chilly this afternoon, only 11, 12 degrees in a few spots and colder in other places as well. Tomorrow, we're going to be seeing temperatures potentially peak around 10 degrees, maybe 11 in a few spots, but generally mid to high single digits. Could drop quite cold overnight, getting down to maybe 3, 4 degrees potentially, um, so pretty chilly, and uh, maybe an overnight frost in a few places. Wednesday afternoon, quite cold indeed, 9 degrees max for many, maybe 10, 11 in the far south, but it won't be feeling that warm, it will be feeling pretty chilly. With the northerly wind, you could take probably 2 or 3 degrees off for feel-like temperatures, so areas that are seeing sort of 3, 4, 5 degrees are going to be feeling like freezing, or just above freezing. Areas where it's 10, 11 degrees will feel in like 7 or 8 degrees, so still pretty chilly. Overnight, we could be seeing temperatures drop quite cold, uh, potentially getting towards freezing, especially in the north across Scotland. Maybe a widespread frost for the south, England, Ireland, maybe 2, 3, 4, 5 degrees, so still chilly. Thursday afternoon, really, really quite cold, 7 or 8 degrees. Um, and then overnight to Friday, that's where we could really see the potential for an overnight frost for many areas, especially in the south, 7, 8 degrees, but a milder air mass is moving in the north, so temperatures are on the up. And then Friday, 9, 10 degrees, and by Saturday, temperatures are looking on the up, maybe getting up towards 14 or maybe 15 degrees in a few spots. Uh, but again, won't feel massively mild to deal with a northwesterly wind. So things looking quite chilly over the next sort of four or five days. Then things are going to be turning milder next weekend into the next working week with rain, widespread rain and wind returning. And then towards the middle of the month, a lot of uncertainty around with the main models all showing some form of northern locking, which is a route for the UK to potentially seeing some proper cold weather. But we'll have to keep an eye on what's going to be happening with that. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.